Hey everybody, we are <laughs> for the SSA Gold Rush Gaming Men's National Championship. We're a little early. We can go, yeah. So we're going to go. Here we go. It's game time. And here's what it's come down to in this crazy, crazy weekend. We have pretty much most of the top ten in softball eliminated. So what we got here is you're looking at BTA's pregame huddle. They are going to be playing Hall of Fame concessions from Iowa. Of course, Hall of Fame in the red. Now, Hall of Fame has won an SSA Class A Glove National Championship. They're trying to become the first team in SSA history. And if I'm not mistaken, in any association history to win a Class A and a major national championship. BTA won the toss, and they will be the home team. So Hall of Fame, we know them well, terrific defensively, very fast. They've been rolling and swinging the bats. BTA came through the loser's bracket, and it was Hall of Fame concessions that put them there earlier in the weekend. So this figures to be a good ball game, could be high scoring, as it feels like the wind is blowing from left to right and on an outward type angle. So we could be looking at a slugfest, but... This is the first championship game. Again, BTA needs to double dip here if they're going to win the national championship. If Hall of Fame concessions wins, they will be the national champion, and they will be the first major national champion since carpet country. I had a little somebody texted me there. So this figures to be a good, good matchup here. And, again, it was just a – ridiculously crazy weekend in terms of all of the big name teams that get most of the publicity got whacked and got dumped in the losers bracket and eliminated and every time you thought okay now it's this team's tur turn to be the favorite they promptly would turn around and lose and get kicked out so here's how Hall of Fame is going to go, leading off Jordan Bowers. Then it'll be T.J. Flanagan and Trey Blackford. Anybody gets on, it'll be Sam Rogers, Dakota Walken, who you saw in the All-Star game, spectacular defender. And there's a high pop-up, and that's handled by the shortstop, Tommy Washington, for out number one. So Jordan Bowers looked like he was just trying to flip over the infield and hit a little soft fly ball. And here's T.J. Flanagan. Again, we were saying Dakota Walker, Woken, tremendous, made a couple of unbelievably great plays in that All-Star game. Both of these teams got great team speed. So we anticipate ball start getting banged in the gaps that we're going to have a lot of people flying around these bases. And we talked a little bit about Hall of Fame. And now we got Washington Park, who's had a terrific, <laughs> terrific year as the Pharaohs won the SSA No Glove A National Championship, named after Tom Exarnik and sponsored by Napleton. 
And then Line Drive ended up winning the Glove A National Championship by the SSA out in Carroll Stream a couple of weeks ago. And now here they are trying to win their third national championship. And there's a sinking line drive base hit in front of James Hobson, who's playing center field today. So that's our first hit of the ball game. Of course, the live stream is powered by Gold Rush Gaming. By the way, we had that free raffle. And Bo Filkins ended up winning the very nice Gold Rush Gaming cooler that they were, I don't know if it's a raffle, it was free to sign up and you got a ticket and a chance to win. So here's Trey Blackford playing short center today. Of course, Trey's father runs the team and had a real pleasant conversation with him. And he talked about how they run their group. And this guy here, Jordan Bowers, was telling me that a lot of their players are people that Nobody wanted, and Trey hits it toward the gap. Hobson is there. He'll put it away. So Trey didn't quite barrel up on it, and the ball just kind of hung up in the air a little bit for an out. So two outs now brings up Sam Rogers. And so I was joking. It was like the land of misfit toys, for those of you that – Remember the Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer cartoon? And they were all kind of laughing, and they talked about the fact that they don't really go out and recruit. They're just a group of guys that have kind of grown up together and gotten better, and they just go out and they battle hard. And there's a strike. Another interesting story today. Antoine Thrash, high pop-up, that could be trouble, long run, long run, and he gets there. Great catch there by the right fielder, Maron Jones. He ran a long way for that, made the catch, made it look easy. So there you go. So at the end of one, half inning of play, no score. As Rodgers flips to right, again, that ball hung up a little bit. And as a result of that, Jones was able to get there. So coming up here, it's going to be Savanta Samuels, James Hobson, Wes Shannon. They'll be followed by Donnie Chapman, John Banks, Tommy Washington, then Arion Gibson, Gregory Fleming, Maron Jones, and Antoine Thrash. So interesting story about Thrash is... He is basically retired from softball, and they picked him up for this tournament, and here he is about to possibly pitch a Washington Park team to a major national championship. So that was a big inning there for the BTA team. And again, we also talk about that layoff. And Hall of Fame went through that layoff, and now we'll see if they get back to speed because they just punished Impact in a game that George Bliss broadcasted earlier. So we'll see if they can get back to that type of an edge here. And by getting that egg here, BTA now has given themselves a chance to maybe jump on Hall of Fame and get an early lead. So here's a pitch, and that's a little deep. And we'll we'll kind of at the end of this half inning we'll try to try to and there's a little cut and it falls right in front of the left fielder. So Dylan Deveni tried to get there, just couldn't, and the ball dropped in for a single. So here's James Hobson playing center field, and James. Uh, I remember uh, Jerry Brown telling me several years ago that he just thought the world of this kid and his uh, athletic ability. And there's a little flare, and Walken came in and made the catch. That ball looked for a second like it was going to be trouble as that little slight cross breeze was kind of knocking it down a little bit. But speed kills. So here comes Wes Shannon, and Wes has been 
really hitting the ball. We were looking at the stats. I think he was hitting over 700. He was hitting over 700 coming into this game. So here's Wesley. And like I said, this BTA team, they punished impact. And West goes, hard line drive. He continues his hitting. Shavante is going to cruise in. High throw, doesn't matter. West was getting a double anyway. So one out now, second and third. And I got to... And I got to tell you that um, if it comes up later in the ball game, is here's Donnie Chapman. I don't think I'm going to pitch to West Shannon. I think every time you get into these games, you have to decide who you do not want to beat you. And the way he's swinging it, Chapman hit, delivers, base hit, first run of the ball game, and they throw it right to the cutoff, man. So Donnie Chapman, a veteran, been around the block. Back in the day, Donnie used to just swing from the heels. He's learned now through the years how to take something off. Just hit the hump back. Runners at the corner now for John Banks as we got our first run of the game, one to nothing BTA. So again, we were getting back to Wes. If it comes up in either this or an if game, I think. If you're a Hall of Fame, you got to make up your mind that you're just not going to allow him to beat you. Because even though Donnie is a pretty good hitter, I think Wes is a different kind of a problem. He's left-handed, which gives him an advantage on any ground ball. And John Banks slaps it on the ground. That's going to score one. And they call him out. So he does drive in the second run of the ball game. And he gets Donnie Chapman over to to uh, second base. So getting back to Wes, you always got to decide that. He's left-handed, which is a problem on ground balls. He's fast, so if he throws it toward the gap, it's probably a double. He's got big pop, which means he's capable of hitting a home run or a line drive. He's just a difficult man. And when Wes is running good and feeling good, he might be one of the top three players in the game. So at the end of the day, you always got to look ahead, managers. We're on game changers, so you could have gone and looked up statistics, and you could have looked at Wes Shannon's numbers. So here's Tommy Washington now, and he strokes a base hit. Chapman's going to try it. Throw is offline. So Tommy Washington stroked a single, three to nothing. And I, I don't, I don't really like that throw to the plate. Again, uh, you allowed Tommy Washington to pick up an extra 60 feet there with two outs. Chapman was going to run on the swing, and as a result of that. Now you're giving up another runner in scoring position, three to nothing. So that brings up Arian Gibson playing second base here. And there's a hump back off the glove. Washington will score four to nothing, BTA. And of course, earlier in the tournament, Hall of Fame beat BTA. And again, BTA right now is lathered up as they made that run through the through the losers bracket. And again, Hall of Fame been sitting around since they won at 2:30. So we'll see here. Again, Hall of Fame capable of scoring runs. Greg Fleming and Walken can't get there. Run number five is going to score. Fleming with a double. And just like that, they've exploded for a fin here. Five to nothing. Five to nothing. BTA. So here we go. It's going to bring up Maron Jones, the ninth hitter of the inning. So BTA has come out. And I tell you, we saw this look on the Pharaohs in the no-glove A. And we saw this look by line drive 
in the glove, eh? And BTA has the same look right now. This is only the bottom of the first, and there's another hit, six to nothing, as Jones throws it over. Six to nothing. So it is been a little bit of a jailbreak here. Bottom of the first, six to nothing. Brings up Antoine Thrash. So, BTA again, when you're rolling like they have been, and, and they'll, they're capable of doing that. They're, ca- they're capable of all jumping on, and there's a ground ball, and you can see Thrash doesn't really run very well. So Thrash ends the inning, but they do spin the lineup, 10 batters, six of which scored. We'll head to the top of the second, six to nothing, BTA. So we told you we'd give you a little background on how both teams got here. And BTA originally played old timers. They beat old timers. Then they beat Moneyline. And then they lost to Hall of Fame six to two, which put them in the losers bracket. When they got into the losers bracket, BTA then had to play Hex. They then beat Hex. They then played Smack Out, beat Smack Out, and they beat Impact to get here. Hall of Fame has gone clean in the tournament. So they came out and they beat the Shooters on opening night. Then they beat Splash. They knocked Smack Out into the loser's bracket. Then they... They had the aforementioned win against BTA. They beat Impact. And Arion Gibson makes the play, and Dakota Walken is out number one. And then here they are. So they've played a lot fewer games. Nice play by Arion Gibson as he rolled into the hole and made it look easy with a little backhand flip. So that's going to bring up Ross Randall. And right now, everything going BTA's way. And Ross hits a high fly ball, but that's going to be right at James Hobson for out number two. So Hall of Fame has been rolling, and you can tell right now. Yes, this is Joliet. So you can tell right now that they're just not back up to speed after cruising through the winner's bracket. So we will see if uh, it, <laughs> if they can hang on here, because right now it looks like BTA is going to force an if game if this trend continues, and they are really playing a hard inning and a third so far. So here's Pat Sharpshire, third baseman, first baseman, and there's a little spinner, and that's going to hit the turf and go foul. So it's kind of interesting. See, you've got some fans down there, down the sideline. And your impression might be that there isn't much of a crowd here. But the problem is they got this elevated area near the concession stand, and there's a lot of people jammed in over there eating food and having a few libations. There's a little pop-up to Greg Fleming, and that's going to be out number three. So, again, the live stream is sponsored by our good friends at Gold Rush Gaming. If you're looking to put video gaming in your establishment, give them the call. They are the gold standard in video gaming. You can call them at 630-307-0500, or you can email them at inquiries at goldrushgaming.com and they're great people to do business with if you're in the Chicagoland area gaming's going to be coming shortly you might want to reach out to them and just talk to them a little bit you can sign contracts in anticipation of the video gaming going into effect 
So we're back at the top of the BTA lineup with Chavante Samuels. Also known as Cap. We're used to seeing him in the outfield, but today he's on the infield. He gets in the base hit. Let's go! So you can tell that BTA is excited. And realistically, if you're a Hall of Fame, the only way you can calm down a team that gets excited like this, no matter who they are, is you got to hit with them. And through two innings, Hall of Fame has not been able to do that. So there's a little cut swing, and that's going to get down by Hobson. And they put their first two hitters on, and here's Wes Shannon. So we talked about you don't want guys to beat you, but now you're in a trick bag because you're down six. You can't walk them. you got to pitch to them. And I think Wes might be looking to put his stamp on this game, and he could be looking to really drive it, but he beats it on the ground, throw to second, they get one. Again, Wes, a left-handed hitter, you're not going to get him. Looked like Wes was looking to really turn and burn there, and he just kind of pulled off of it, kind of topped it. Nice play by the second baseman over there as he didn't panic and he didn't rush himself, Sam Rogers, as he flipped it over to Trey Blackford for the fielder's choice. And here's Chapman. And now he tries to go big. Left fielder, the ball's carrying, he makes the catch. And West did not tag, but it's certainly far enough to score the seventh run. So Dylan Deveni had a backtrack, but he got there. Again, that little cross breeze knocked that down. So here's John Banks. I think at this point to get out of this inning with a run, if you're Hall of Fame, you'll take it. And John Banks just slaps it. And Wes is really cranking it up. He takes a big turn. And that's a nice job here. Nice job there by the pitcher, Chris Netlicky. As a lot of the teams in Washington Park, they'll, they'll take aggressive turns at first and third. And the reason is they don't want timeout called. And they're hoping that you might throw back to third or try to go to first and they can maybe steal a run. Here's Tommy Washington, strokes that right at Rogers and Sharpshire with a nice pick. But in the inning, they push another one across at the end of two in this first championship game, seven to nothing, BTA looking to force the if game. What do you guys think? If game today? Oh, yeah, they're all set. There's my guy, Travis. I think he's still recovering from having to manage that all-star game on Friday. <laughs> so... Unfortunately, Illinois got a bad result, and now Iowa's really trying to steal our cake by winning a major national on top of it. So we'll see what happens. Of course, I'm just joshing. We, we love all the teams that participate in the Slow Pit Softball Association. And Hall of Fame has got a nice group as well. So I believe this is Justin Burns, be followed by Dylan Deveni, and then the pitcher, I think. Wouldn't be surprised if they don't hit for the pitcher. And like I said, at some point, if you're Hall of Fame, you're just trying to kind of get re-lathered up. And there's a ball. Arian Gibson took a step, went down to a knee, and made the catch. So Jordan Burns... Lines out to the second baseman. So here's Dylan Deveni, the left fielder. And it does look like a pinch hitter on deck. Can't see over there. That might be Cody Johnson. Not sure. But we'll get it. Hopefully we can catch the uniform number. So here's Dylan trying to start something. He beats it on the ground. Tommy Washington throws it in the dirt. And Wes Shannon made the scoop. And they called him safe. 
Tony Ward not too happy about it. And you see John Banks saying, come on, we got the momentum. And Tommy, Tommy Washington's looking at Wes, and he pointed at JB because JB, very fiery, passionate kid, and he's like, come on, we got the momentum, we're up seven. So it is a pinch hitter. I didn't catch the number. It was a terrific scoop there by by Wes Shannon. I don't know what the umpire, I don't know if the umpire thought maybe he left the bag early. Again, I, I think I got it on tape, so you folks at home can take a look at it. And again, we were talking that these are two of the quicker teams in softball. They got, both sides got a lot of guys that can run. And there's a little swing and a flare, and that's going to be out as Maron Jones makes the catch. So that was Cody Johnson. And now they're back to the top with Jordan Bowers. I think if you're Hall of Fame, you're down seven in the third inning. You just like to score a run or two and maybe try to stem this momentum. And one good way of stemming momentum and trying to blunt the other team is to score a couple of runs with two outs. And there's a swing and a long fly ball. That's going to be foul and out of play. I think if that's fair, I think if that ball is fair, Greg Flemings gets to it. Speaking of two-out hitting, <laughs> the shooters had a ball game that they won in this tournament and with two outs. And I think there was nobody on base. They ended up scoring something like 12 runs with the mitts. It's like unheard of. So crazy things all weekend, folks. You know, if you didn't get a chance to get out here, you missed some outstanding softball. So we had upsets all over the place. Just talking to a lot of people and a lot of old timers my age and older. None of them can remember a major national championship tournament where all of the big dogs were getting beat. Little crazy hop to throw in time. Great job there as Javante Samuels playing third base. Picked it going to his left. Threw a bullet to first. And just like that, we hugged at the bottom of the third, seven to nothing. BTA. So TJ, TJ Flanagan was trying to get down the line there. Just couldn't it? Might have been, might have been Jordan Bowers. I always, I always laugh because Tony Ward actually umpires in the A division and cracks me up when an umpire wants to question another umpire. Take it easy, Spags. So it's going to be Arion Gibson, Greg Fleming, and Maron Jones coming up here in the bottom of the third. It's been all BTA thus far, seven to nothing, as they just turned the lights on. And takes that pitch. Today was a good day to play as we had... Uh, we had rain, but there's a base hit. So BTA just swinging the bats really good. We had a little rain this morning. Stopped around 9, 10, 9, 15. Of course, we're on turf, so it didn't affect us as we started at 10 today. Here's Gregory Fleming. He's got to hit the center field his last time up. And now here's a pitch. Takes the, oh, I call that a strike. Okay. And we didn't miss a beat. There's a little ground ball to third, to second for one. The relay not in time as it hits the screen. 
And Arian Gibson, I don't know what he did there. He had a kind of a crazy slide. Might have got a little wind knocked out of him. It was a nice play there by the third baseman. T.J. Flanagan, he threw a strike to Trey Bra- Blackford, but Greg Fleming's the left fielder, very quick. And Trey tried to rush a little bit. They do have a very high screen behind first base, so as an infielder, you feel pretty good about that because you got a lot of leeway. And there's a swing by Maron Jones, and he gets his second hit of the ball game. And it brings up Antoine Thrash. And they're going to pinch hit. And that's not a bad, it wouldn't be a bad thing because you're up seven to nothing. You only got one out. So they might just be trying to have Thrash hit a ground ball and move these two runners because Cap on deck already has a couple of hits. Now, it wouldn't have been a horrible thing with a big lead to maybe think about hitting for Thrash if you thought that you could really put this away early. And again, now, he's got to get off of here. He's quick, but nobody's that quick because they're playing him tight. And Thrash just does his job, and he's going to move him. And again, he took a took a full swing, and now he's grabbing the back of his legs. I'll tell you the way he's pitching for him, you don't want to lose him because they brought him in for this weekend for a reason, and that is they felt like they needed to upgrade their pitching a little bit. So two outs now. Cap delivers, so the strategy works. Throw to the plate. They throw behind safe. And I guess, and I guess, Sharpshire here at first wasn't really expecting the snap throwback. In the meantime, I did miss the substitution as as uh, they have replaced their pitcher, trying to slow it down. But we got a nine to nothing ball game here, and Washington Park, very own BTA playing a terrific game. There's a high fly ball caught by DeVerney, DeVenny, and we're going to head now to the top of the fourth, nine to nothing. It's been all BTA this first championship game. So, again, as a manager, there's not much you can do when you're trying to get your team to, you know, kind of snap back into that intense you know mode that they were in before they took the break and again now you're playing for a major national championship hall of fame has never been in that position and i don't believe that they have anybody who may have ever been in this position so i just think sometimes you know it's just a little difficult and how do you handle that you know when you're sitting around and you're waiting so it's going to be T.J. Flanagan. I think I said Flanagan made the last out last inning. That was actually Jordan Bowers, followed by Trey Blackford and then Sam Rogers. So you do have two, three, four coming up. And, again, sometimes how you finish is as important as how you start. In this case, you're down nine, and it's a tall task. But if you're Hall of Fame, you'd like to tighten this up, even if you can't climb the mountain. You want to at least finish strong. So if you do end up heading into an if game, you want to make sure that your team is feeling a lot better about it and that maybe, just maybe, you put some doubt into BTA's head a little bit. And if you're thrash, you want to keep working here. And there's a little pop-up. Started back. Plenty of speed to come back in. Easy catch there for Hobson. As his first, as his first instinct. And something happened. Wes Shannon's grabbing his right wrist. And I don't know what he did there. 
And the BTA guys don't look like they're in a hurry to. <laughs> So that's his glove hand. I'm not sure what he did, but he grabbed it. I don't know if he's having a cramp. So, again, if he's getting a cramp in that hand, they're, well, they're, that's a little off-color jokes I'm hearing in the background. hope it didn't get out live. So here's Trey Blackford. Flew out his first time up. And right now, that's been the, the main problem here with the Hall of Fame offense. They're just not barreling up right now. And there's a ball hit right to Wes. Went right at him with the bad hand. And Wes is, he's trying to buy himself a little time. And two outs. And he's grabbing that wrist. And that brings up Sam Rogers. So, Hall of Fame there, I mean, they're all standing up. Nobody's sitting them open. But right now, they're just getting it handed to them here. And really, they just got to keep working because the one nice thing about being in the winner's bracket, and we told you, there's a very high percentage of teams that lose that first game when they go clean sometimes in a tournament. Now, this game actually started early. So, there's a ball down the line. Maron Jones can't make the catch. Fair ball. He's going to cruise into third. Nothing you can do there. My, Maron Jones was running. Ball looked like it hit on the heel of his glove. So, they get a runner for Dakota. Walking is Sam Rogers down that right field line. So this is this is very important right here because you need to crack the seal. And there's a ball hit right at Thrash's feet, and they get Dakota walking out. So you see Thrash been around the block. That ball was a rifle shot. He couldn't make the catch. The ball stayed at his feet, and you can see he checked the runner real quick, and then he threw then he threw then he threw a fastball and and again so Maron Jones is all upset with himself saying he's got to catch the ball and they're trying to tell him dude he didn't score it's okay so that could have been a nice pickup there but again Hall of Fame can't cash in so now we head to the bottom of the fourth and the fact that they didn't score becomes a little magnified because Wes Shannon going to be leading off here. And then Donnie Chapman and John Banks. And let's keep an eye out. That hand is cramping him. And didn't seem to hurt him on that swing. And, you know, being left-handed, that right hand, that's his bottom hand. So I got to tell you, these guys are pretty brave. If a guy's having a hand issue, to to try to be that close to him because you never know what's going to happen. And I'm not going to lie to you, Geo's getting ready to move. Um, so here's Wes going to try to start something. Hits a ground ball. Trey Blackford, nice play for out number one. Brings up Donnie Chapman. So now if you're BTA right now, you'd like to get that 10th run and get into mercy run territory. Put the pressure on Hall of Fame in the top of the fifth to score. And maybe short circuit this and get it to the if game. And again, the big story in this game Big crooked number in the first inning. And that's going to, Donnie's not even going to run. Well, he did run, but he didn't run. So, two outs, and here's John Banks. 
So again, it would have liked to if your BTA try to get that tenth run and not give Hall of Fame a chance to play a couple of more innings and kind of get back in, get their legs back under them. And in these situations, if you're Hall of Fame, you've got to understand you've got another ball game. So if you do lose this game, you start out 0-0, and then the pressure is going to be even more intense because it is going to be for the national championship. And we'll see if BTA can continue to... And there's a little spinner, and that ball took a crazy route. Started out at the third baseman, hit the c carpet, started going toward Ross Randall, and then decided it was going to hook a little bit more, and it ended up with Trey Blackford, the short center, picking it up. I seen that once in a pool tournament. Trick shot. If you can bottle and patent that swing, you could hit a high percentage. And Tommy Washington goes deep. And that ball's going to roll. Tommy Washington saw Dylan Deveni playing him short, and he golfs a two-run homer over the top, and it is 11 to nothing now here in the bottom of the fourth. So T.J. Flanagan has come in, relief of Chris Nedelicki, and flattened out, and Tommy Washington looked like he was at the tee box at Augusta, and he just golfed that ball over to left fielder. So here we go. As Arian Gibson flies out to end the inning. This has been all BTA in this game. So they need three outs here, and they'll force the if game. And we will start a new stream if that is the case. So, again, we'll find out quite a bit about this Hall of Fame team. So here we go. We'll see if Hall of Fame can get off the carpet here and avoid the whitewash. So it's going to be Ross Randall, Pat Sharp's here, and Justin Burns. So again, Hall of Fame still seems like they're connected to the game. They know that this one may have slipped away in the first. And, you know, that's the interesting thing. Sometimes if you lose the toss and you are the visitor like Hall of Fame was, it's not a bad thing if you can come out and score. The problem is if you don't score, then your opponent can come in and maybe do what BTA did here. And I, I don't know. They're taking Antoine's cell phone had in his back pocket and he just realized he had to have a coach come out and get it so here's Ross Randall it's kind of a do or die inning in the sense that if they don't score two the game is going to be over and we'll have an if game there is an if game we may give you a little different view in the if game we may slide over to third base just to change things up here's Ross Randall oh Tommy Washington Tommy Washington playing deep about two feet in front of the natural grass climbed the ladder and stole it for out number one so everything going BTA's way, Pat Sharpshire coming up. And Sharpshire hits a bomb. Myron Jones is there, out number two. 
And that brings up Justin Burns, the last hope here for Hall of Fame to kind of keep this particular game alive. And we're going to click off. We'll start a new stream like we told you. Should this be the third out? Again, this is a history-making day here in the SSA. As we will have a team other than signature flashback from Tito's 45s win a major national title. We got two teams that have never won one. One from Washington Park who's never won one. And a team from Iowa trying to become only the second team in Iowa to ever win one. And there's a line drive fair down the line. Burns is going to hustle into second. So Justin Burns hit a rocket fair down the left field line. Brings up Dylan Deveni. Dylan got beat by Tommy Washington. Is the wind picking up a little bit here? And that's a high pop-up. We got a NIF game. So there will be a NIF game. We will click off and we'll start a new stream. BTA, they got half the job done as they're going to force a NIF game. So we will start a new stream. So we will be back. Folks, stay with us. On behalf of Gold Rush Gaming, we got to... What's up with everybody? Come on, Ron Ron. Come on, Ron Ron. Hey, that's nothing else. Here we go. We are back live in Joliet at Harwood Lockwood Sports Complex where we do have an if game, free softball. And the interesting thing is the if game was scheduled for 7 o'clock. And, of course, we are at about 6 13. So we are actually 45 minutes ahead of schedule. There you go. I just want to say hi to all the Hall of Fame family back home. There you go. So Hall of Fame, despite being forced into a NIF game, they don't look too tight. Um, and again, we talk all the time. This is for all the marbles. A NIF game for a national championship. And it's like the seventh game of the World Series or the Stanley Cup Finals. Anything can happen. It was all BTA 11 to nothing in the first championship game. And they won the toss again. So they're going to be the home team again. The only change in the lineups is Cody Johnson will start on the mound for Chris Netlicky. And here we go. So we had a little wind. Well, I guess they took the tent down from over to scorekeeper. Hope we don't get any rain. But it's been clouded over, and leading off is going to be Jordan Bowers and T.J. Flanagan, Trey Blackford. Anybody gets on, Sam Rogers, Dakota Walk, and Ross Randall. Then it'll be Pat Sharpshire, Justin Burns, Dylan Deveni, and Cody Johnson. So this is a very, very big half inning. If... It's a very, very big half an inning in this if game. And the reason why I say that is BTA won the first game, and now you get a chance to hit first, and you need to show BTA that this is going to be a different ball game. And so you want to put a little pressure on them because they were free swinging in that other ball game. The good news about an if game is you just got to flush it and you tell your team, no big deal. Now let's get back to business. And there's a swing and a ground ball. Capped a long throw in time for the first out of the inning. So we're used to seeing Cap and center. He's made a couple of nice plays at third base. Jordan Bowers was looking to 
slap and go. I think he was looking to hit that ball between Cap and Tommy Washington. Just couldn't get it there. Here's T.J. Flanagan. So, again, big half inning here. And that ball's on the plate by hook or by crook. So, right now, Hall of Fame is looking for their first run here since we had the championship games begin. He drops the ball there. Again, it's inadvertent, so that is not considered a pitch. And here we are for the marbles. And there's a rocket base hit. So T.J. Flanagan rips a single up the middle. And just like that, base runner. And poor Rebecca just got blocked on the live stream. Again, we are live in Joliet. Live stream powered by Gold Rush Gaming. More on that later. So one out, one on for Trey Blackford. Again, you saw his father wishing all the Hall of Fame fans. And Trey pops it up. And that's a long run. And Maron makes the catch. So I don't know what happened there. Arian Gibson was going back. All of a sudden, he stopped. And I tell you, Maron reached down. And he was actually kind of lucky. That ball stayed in the webbing of the glove. So Trey Blackford, I think he was trying to go hard in the right center. <laughs> Just didn't barrel up. And that pitch a little outside is Sam Rogers. And Sam was the MVP the year Hall of Fame concessions. Won the Class A Glove National Championship. So here's Thrash now trying to get BTA in the dugout with two outs and a runner on first. And, again, these are big outfields. But right now, Hall of Fame, when they do hit the ball to the outfield, the exception of that T.J. Flanagan missile, been getting a little too much air under it. And, again, in these conditions, you don't need to swing out of your shoes because the ball is going to carry a little bit, especially anything hit center field, right field line, I think. And there's a little flare. Tommy Washington puts it away. And just like that, it's the end of the top half of the first. So big goose egg there by BTA. And Hall of Fame, which normally likes to freewheel it with the sticks, has just been struggling. Is that six innings of championship play, and they have not scored a run yet. Again, this is kind of historic in that we've got two teams that have never won a men's major national championship tournament. Iowa trying to become the first team in SSA history, and I believe in any association history to have won a Class A major national championship and a major national championship, Washington Park on their end, trying to become the first team from Washington Park to ever win a men's major national championship. And again, this was just such a wild weekend with upsets. So here comes Shavante Samuels, cap, leading off. So big half inning here. Hall of Fame. I believe they probably felt a little pressure, and that ball's toward the gap, and it's going to sit for a leadoff hit. So again now, Shavante Samuels, he does have some pop, but right now they're throwing a lot of pitches up around head level, maybe a little higher, and BTA has just been coming over the top and dumping it over the infield. So here's a hard ground ball to Randall. Long throw, not in time. Again, we told you, two very fast teams. James Hobson hit it. Ross a little deep at short. Didn't quite get it clean out of the glove. And this is beginning to look like the first inning a little bit from the first championship game. 
is we got two runners on, nobody out for Wes Shannon. Wes takes that pitch a little short. And again, you can see, I don't know how much. Well, this is actually TJ Flanagan on the hill. I don't know how much TJ pitches, but he's not even pump faking. And he's really not even going there. He kind of stepped a little bit toward third, but and he gets a high pop up. Could be trouble. Long run. Second baseman makes the catch. So the minute the second baseman, Sam Rogers, had to go out and make that catch, there was no possibility of preventing Cap from going to third as he was backpedaling. But again, you don't expect Wes Shannon to pop a ball up. Here's Donnie Chapman, familiar position for him. Donnie got BTA rolling in the first championship game in the first inning with one out and two on. He delivered to put BTA up two to nothing in that ball game, and then they started the rolling. And there's a fair ball down the line. One run is in. Chapman a double. And <clears throat> James Hobson stops one to nothing. So the veteran, Donnie Chapman, delivers again. Now there's one out, two runners in scoring position for James Banks. JB now. JB a couple of hits in that first game. And again with Netlicky. And there's a ground ball. He looks him back, and he's going to score easily. Now the throw gets away. Chapman's going to get to third. Again, at that point, Hobson is so quick. It's very difficult to think that even looking him back is going to make a difference. He was very aggressive. The throw got away from the catcher. Chapman would not have gone if the throw didn't get away. And here's Washington, two, two to nothing ball game. And right now, if you're a Hall of Fame, you want to try to get out of here with just a two. They only have one on the board. That's incorrect. I'm sure they will correct that. And Washington takes that as both Savante Samuels and James Hobson have scored. And that pitch is outside. Well, they call that two strikes. But I got to tell you, I don't know how long you can go with necessarily with Flanagan on the hill. Because if he's just going to stand there sooner or later, I think BTA will figure that out. And there's a ground ball. And he may prove me wrong. But that's a much better inning than they had last game. <clears throat> Two to nothing. Again, I'm not quite sure what's going on here with the scorekeeper. So we're going to see. I want to make sure that we got the right score. So we'll take a walk down here. So they did correct it. Last thing we want to do is have a scoreboard controversy. You see some of the banners out there. No, Jake, I didn't. And that shows you maybe you're making stuff up. My point is you just can't stand on a rubber, not fake, and deliver the ball in the same way and expect to be successful against good teams. So, again, we've had a lot of people getting very picky on the live streams this weekend, and I don't know what the deal is, but it happens. So two to nothing here, top of the second. 
Dakota woken up, and he just hit that literally right off his thumbs as he pops it up. And again, uh, Hall of Fame here. Five innings and now one and a third. They're just not barreling up. This team is used to putting more balls in play hard. So, so far, Thrash has done a beautiful job on the hill. You can see he's he's moving, sliding, pump faking. He's throwing balls short. So here comes Thrash. There's a ground ball. Nice job by Arian Gibson as he makes a routine play. Well, yeah, it's my understanding that he's a 12-inch guy. And they put him on the hill, so I don't even know how much 16-inch the young man has played. Angela, it's 2 to nothing. BTA, top of the second, with two outs. Here's Pat Sharpshire, the first baseman. And again, I think uh, if you're a Hall of Fame here, you're wondering what happened to your bats. And there's a long fly ball on this horse. Mayron Jones makes a catch. So Mayron Jones, he showed you he can come in and get it. And now he showed you he can get out to the gap. That ball got smoked by... Sharpshire is one of the longer, harder hit balls we've seen in the two games. These are 300 foot fences and you gave it a ride out there about 280 or so. But it's just a long out. So at the end of an inning and a half, two to nothing, BTA coming to bat and looking for more. Again, right now we are we're starting to get into that part of the ball game where it's going to start being psychological for Hall of Fame. We saw this last year when Circus played Tito's 45s, and they got the, the double dip at the no glove, and 45s were cruising along, and all of a sudden they lost, they scored only two in the first championship game, and I think they only scored two or one in the championship game. So there's a swing and a base hit by Arian Gibson, leading off as he slashed the hit toward left center. So, you know, Tito's in those two games, you could see Every inning that went by that they didn't score, they were getting a little tighter. And I think that's what Hall of Fame is in jeopardy of. Here comes Greg Flemings. Did not get a chance to talk Loyola basketball with him uh, this weekend like I normally do. It's Greg involved with hoops, and he tees it up. And Dakota Walken can't get that ball. It's going to roll almost. He bounces off the screen. Two-run homer. Four to nothing BTA. And I got to tell you, I know Netlicky got lit up a little bit, and you're trying to maybe get another bat in the lineup. But like I said, you you may need to put your pitcher in and hope that maybe he can do something here. As now they're all starting to get their second, third look at. TJ, and they're starting to hit the ball pretty hard. And that ball is for a strike. And there's a swing, punches it, and Dakota Walken comes flying in. That time takes a hit away from Maron Jones. So here's Antoine Thrash. Thrash having a nice weekend. We hear stories all the time about those guys sitting in their cars, or sitting in their cars, you know, at home sitting on their couch. They get pulled out, and they come and they play, you know, pro sports. Not that we're pro sports, but that was basically Antoine Thrash. The 
they pulled them back in and four to nothing here, bottom of the second, one out. And he draws a walk. And that certainly will drive him. A manager nuts when you walk the bottom of a lineup type hitter. Now, Thrash is not moving well. And sky high, Ross Randall got a late jump, but plenty of speed. They try to throw behind Thrash. Now the ball bounces away. He's not going anywhere. Again, we talk all the time, but Thrash is an older player, just doesn't run very well at this point in his career. And he's what you call a base clogger. So if you're an outfielder and a ball gets hit, you just want to get it in fast. So here's James Hobson. And James, a little too tall for the second baseman. Sam Rogers got up. He got a little glove on it. but just couldn't catch it. And that's okay. Here comes Wes Shannon. For the record, Bruce, you said it. And Wes, play gets made there, and they get him out. But two more runs, four to nothing. We head to the third. And you can see Hall of Fame's not given up yet. But they need to swing the bats as they're a very animated group here. So here we go. So here we go. <laughs> little colorful language. Lock up the kids and put them to bed. So here we go. Looks like Sam Rogers is going to go coach first. I'm thinking maybe they're trying to switch things up, which teams do. Very superstitious at times. So it's going to be the bottom third of the lineup. Justin Burns, Dylan Deveni, Cody Johnson. Both teams only swinging 10. This is the if game for all the marbles. Top of the third, four to nothing. So far we've seen seven innings. Hall of Fame searching for their first run. Again, BTA been just playing fantastic. They got that look about them. And it was interesting because I was at Forest Park this week on, last week on Wednesday. Here's the pitch. It was 11 to nothing, BTA in the first one. And BTA was kind of having one of them come to Jesus meetings. And that's off a thrash. The ball kicks right back to him. Can't make the play. So that ball was hit hard. Thrash couldn't make the play. The ball actually bounced away from him. But it hit the carpet and spun back to him. But unfortunately for BTA, his throw was wide left. So BTA was having kind of a come-to-Jesus meeting. It's so one of their coaches was talking to the group. And apparently I got there, I was just passing by. And I don't know, they sucked me into it. And asked me if I had heard of a team called BTA. Here's Dylan Deveni. And I said, I have. They're pretty good when they want to play. And the coach started laughing. And he went into a spiel. And there's a ball hit to the gap. That's trouble. And can't make the play. Hobson got leather on it. Couldn't make the play. Deveni's going to score. And just like that, they cut the lead in half, 4-2. to two. Dylan Deveni hit a rocket in the left center field. Hobson got on his horse, made a dive horizontally. Ball kicked off his mitt, rolled to the fence, and Deveni was flying. He was right on Burns' backside, and it's a two-run homer.
and they're going to appeal third. Safe, says the home plate umpire. Well, Thomas, the, the problem there was if he doesn't leave his feet, that ball's rolling to the wall anyway. And there's a throw in the dirt. West Shannon picks it out. So that's a situation. If he don't leave his feet, that's rolling to the wall clean. And that's you're going to get the same result there. So he left his feet. If he makes the catch, you save two runs. If you don't make the catch, it's two runs. And if you don't get leather on it, it's two runs. So one out. And now they're back to their top with Jordan Bowers. Hall of Fame now. Crawling back into this in the top of the third. Bowers hits a rocket. And you always talk about hitting being contagious. And we'll see if the Dylan Deveni two-run shot has woken these guys up. Not to be confused with Dakota walking. So that brings up Flanagan. Singled his first time up. And I notice he hit that line drive up the middle, and Arian Gibson now is shading him that way. And there's a high, long drive. Myron Jones will be there. He gave it a ride. He'll easily tag and go in to second. So Flanagan tried to turn and burn, but Myron is playing guys deep, backed up about three or four teams. Well, Severius, this is the if game. Whoever wins this gets the whole bag of marbles and a national championship. So now the game has gotten a little bit of life. And here's Trey Blackford looking for his first hit in these two ball games. If he does, we might have ourselves a four to three ball game. And I'll get to that BTA story at the end of this half inning. So here's Trey Blackford. He shoots it, Arion Gibson. But in the inning, Hall of Fame does break the seal. They score their first two runs, and they make it a 4-2 ball game. Now we'll see what BTA does in response. So getting back to BTA, I'm at Forest Park. I'm walking. Coach says, Gio, you ever hear of a team called BTA? I said, yeah, they're pretty good when they want to play. And he turns around and he tells his group exactly. He said, you guys are all sitting here. You guys are all wondering, you know, and some of you might think that we've been a failure. He said, we won the Clyde Park League. Should have beat Forest, uh, should have beat Tito's 45s in the no glove, you know, and he started rifling off a couple of more of what they have done this year. And after each thing that he mentioned, he said, that's not a failure. That's not a failure. And he was talking about unity and being together and picking each other up and talking about how they had as much talent as anybody else and couldn't make a run. Here's Donnie Chapman leading off. And there's a ground ball back to the mound. So Donnie Chapman, who's been wearing them out, bounces out. And that brings up John Banks. So I thought it was a pretty good speech. If I ever run a team again, I may have to steal some of that. But, you know, there's a sky-high fly ball down the line. Russ Randall got there, couldn't make the catch. Dylan Deveni was there as well. Ross Randall's going to get up. New life. And look at this. We got old-timer guys with a long ride home hanging around. Of course, I got a feeling these guys are all... Staying overnight, I would think. <laughs> Don't drink and drive. So anyways, JB now, new life. JB looked like he wanted to hit that about 10 miles. Hit it right up the elevator shaft. And now he slaps it on the ground. Sam Rogers, no, no chance on that. That was one of those plays where Sam was going up the middle toward his right hand and with a kid like JB you're just never going to get him so that'll bring up Tommy Washington hit a two run homer in the first championship game 
And there he tries to pooch one, and he does. And now they're going to be aggressive. Throw to second. He's going to be out at second. And they throw home. Oh, they called him safe. I thought Joe Monza was saying out. He was saying no. He was under. So, see the coach going out there. The throw was great. Looked like he might have been out. Joe Monza said he was underneath no tag. Not much of an argument. Your key there is you look at the short center. If he's not arguing and complaining, then you know the call was probably right. So one out here, BTA trying to get those two runs back. And there's a fly ball. That's going to score one. As Greg Fleming, who had a two-run homer the time before. Oh, no, I missed the hitter there. My bad. That was Arian Gibson. So five to two. They get one of them back. Greg Fleming is now up. He hit the two-run bomb his last time up. Five to two, bottom of the third, BTA. We are in the if game for all the marbles live from Harlow Lockwood in Joliet. And they still got a lot of people up there by that concession stand. And there's another high fly ball. Dakota Walking goes back, makes the catch. So BTA gets one of the runs back. We're going to head top of the fourth, five to two, BTA. Two teams chasing a major national championship in the if game for all the marbles. Again, the live stream powered by Gold Rush Gaming. If you're looking to put video gaming in your establishment, go with Gold Rush. They're the gold standard. Give them a call at 630-307-0500. Or email them at inquiries at Gold Rush Gaming. Please gamble responsibly. They're also the naming rights sponsors to our tournament this weekend. And if you do call them and inquire about what they can do for you, make sure you mention to them that you heard about them on the live stream. So here we go, leading off, it's going to be Sam Rogers, followed by Dakota Walken, and then Ross Randall. So five to two, much closer ball game than we had in the first championship game, and that really isn't unusual. We told you some teams after sitting around, especially when you're new to the, new to having to wait and to being at that level of a national championship. Sometimes it's tough. And there's a line drive, Maron Jones. Now it bounces over Maron Jones. Sam Rogers is going to score five to three. Maron Jones couldn't get to it. Ball hit the carpet and bounced over his head. Sam Rogers ends up with a crazy solo homer, and it's five to three. And I tell you, Hall of Fame, much more animated now. After that Dylan Deveni home run, they seem to kind of woken up here a little bit. And here is Dakota walking. So we're kind of used to these if games being much more competitive. And the game has a little different feel to it. And now I think if you're a Hall of Fame, you want to find a way to maybe push another run or two across here. So Dylan Deveni, or excuse me, Dakota Walken, and he throws it toward a gap, and Maron gets there, goes into a half sit, made the catch. It's a good ball, but Maron was kind of shaded toward the gap. And I got to tell you, he is 
they've hit some balls there. He is just daring them to hit the ball down the right field line. And to be honest with you, that's where the wind is really howling. Here comes Ross Randall. One out now. One in already. Five to three ball game. BTA leading Hall of Fame concessions. There's so Hall of Fame is taking a few pitches here in this inning. As they've apparently decided they're gonna make Thrash have to throw a few strikes. And maybe it's more a project and he draws a one out walk. Again, that could be one of two things. They might think that Thrash is maybe a little wild, or it just could be that they've decided that they're swinging at bad pitches and they're trying to be a little more selective and they get the bonus of getting a free pass. Here's Sharp's hair. And Pat is certainly capable of hitting a gap. If he does, Ross Randall's going to score from first. And he's taken all the way. You could tell by the way he kind of moved his feet there. Those of you that are regular listeners know that's my pet peeve. And Sharps here. Washington spectacular backhanded catch of a short one hopper. And then he threw a strike to second for the fielder's choice. Tommy Washington throwing some leather around in these two games. Sharps here, even though he's a big man. Is left-handed. Five to three. BTA, top of the third leading Hall of Fame concessions in the if game for all the marbles. Brings up Justin Burns. And again, at this level with these two teams, you would expect... There's a strike. You would expect them both to be playing good defense. And Burns swings. He's going to try to beat Fleming. No such luck. Again, that's really where you don't want to hit the ball because you got a crosswind. Now, you hit that ball down the right field line, you you might get a little love. But in the inning, Hall of Fame does push another run across. Five to three. So we got ourselves a barn burner of a ball game. We are live. What would you say? <laughs> we certainly are. We got 324 people watching. Live! Powered by Gold Rush Gaming. So here we go, leading off. It's going to be Mayron Jones. And let's see if they hit for thrash now. So we're about halfway through the ball game. And this is a tighter ball game. Now, last game they let thrash hit because they had a huge lead. I don't th- see thrash on deck. So I'm not sure if he's just taking his time getting out there or if they're going to have a pinch hitter. I do see 39 Ellis grabbing a stick. And there's a ball and big jump leaping catch there by Flanagan. As he takes a potential hit away from Mayron Jones. So again in the first ball game, all of those balls were a couple inches higher and finding love. That ball got snagged. For the first down, we do have Ellis pinch hitting here. <clears throat> so, you can tell, we talk all the time about how games take on a life of their own. The first game was just a blowout. And, you know, sometimes, you know, you can recover from a blowout easier than you can a gut wrenching one or two run loss. But this game is taken on, even though the, if you're a hitter, this good conditions. And there's a cut, and Sam Rogers goes back 
puts that away. Two outs here. So BTA still leading. Hall of Fame certainly seems like they're a little bit more into the ball game. If you're Savante Samuels, you want to kind of see if you and James and Wes can get something going here with two outs. The good news is if you're a BTA fan, you got the hammer. It is the bottom of the fourth, five to three BTA leading the if game over Hall of Fame concessions. And see now, Pierce Savante Samuels can't worry about that. Got to go up there and just play offense. And there's a ground ball cut off by the short center, and they get their get the A. And see now, Hall of Fame is jacked up. Did momentum shift sides? We're going to find out. But as a manager and things that you kind of look at, if you get a bad strike call and all of a sudden you start stepping out of the box, it tells you right off the bat that you lost focus as a hitter. And, you know, you can't worry about that. That's why you get three strikes. If he calls that on you for strike three, you know, then you're different. And so, again, Shavante, all the talent in the world, is already a terrific player, and he's only getting better. But that's part of just kind of maturing. And I do like what I'm seeing out of BTA this weekend. And here's Dylan Deveni, the kid who hit the two-run homer, that kind of woke this team up. He'll be followed by Cody Johnson. James Hobson has slid over, and that's going to be an out. Greg Fleming, again, not where you want to hit the ball down that line. The ball's just not really going anywhere there. James Hobson had sh shifted a little bit. He was a little bit more toward the alley. And again, there is a lot of space. These are big outfields. So here's Cody Johnson, and then it'll be the top of the lineup with Jordan Bowers. So it'll be interesting if Cody gets on, whether they pinch run for him. And Tony Ward is moving people in. Ground ball to Shannon, little bobble, and called him safe. Again, we're a long way away. You can rewind the tape. Cody Johnson, and they will. In comes number 20. Mitch Berry is going to pinch run again. You don't see that often. Wes Shannon, very sure-handed. Got a little tricky hop. He tried to corral the ball and dive. And in the opinion of the umpire... Big Cody Johnson beat him. Again, Joe Monza, one of the best. And that's going to bring up the top of the lineup in Jordan Bowers. And that ball's a little deep. And Jordan hit the tip of the plate. 2-0. and oh. So home plate jumping around a little bit here. And grabs a strike there. And here comes the pitcher. It's all of a sudden, it got real quiet. And there's a ball smoked, but it's right at Fleming's. Again. And he dives in head first. Barry, they call timeout. So, again, the ball just not going anywhere to left. It was hit right on the screws. And we've seen we've seen Hall of Fame hit the ball the other way, but we're not seeing it so far tonight. So another run in scoring position for TJ Flanagan. Now My Myron Jones with the lefty has slid way over. 
So he's not giving up all that territory down the right field line. And there's a ground ball. Gibson, long throw, not in time. And Barry's going to try to score, and he steals a run. And now the ball got up in the netting, and he's going to run all over here. What a crazy play. And they're going to call timeout, and I'm going to tell you why. The throw was high. Barry stole a run. They got they got this netting here. So the question is, is that out of play? The netting, it's not a hard netting. It's almost like there's a shelf there. So they're saying, is it out of play? Now, it is normally two bases. And the way the rule normally is, it would be two bases from where you've established where the ball was when it left the hand. The runner was clearly safe at first. So if you call it out of play, you would put the runner on third. If you're saying it's in play, he got the third on his own anyway. So I would assume... Well, no, see, see, the reason why it's weird is he had already established first. He was clearly safe there. And then when they threw the ball home, I'm going to show you what, what it is here. See, this is netting here. It's netting. And the ball wedged right here. So it was crazy. So they do put him at third. Because he had already established first base. They call that a dead ball. And that's the correct call. As the ball wasn't even caught cleanly at first. So it's 5-4. to four, Very aggressive running by Barry. Forcing the throw home. And again... Brings up Trey Blackford, who's he's been jamming himself in these two games. And there's a cut, but right to Shavante Samuels. Trey Blackford struggling a little bit in these two games. So now it's five to four. So Hall of Fame just keeps nudging a little closer, a little closer. And BTA has impressed me most of the weekend. They're facing a little adversity, but hey, man, you're still winning the game, and you got to just calm down, and you just got to keep plugging away. And they're starting to get a little distracted, so they got to refocus. Five to four, bottom of the fifth, BTA leading Hall of Fame concessions. And this game is history in the making. If you're Washington Park, if you're BTA out of Washington Park, you're chasing history. You can be the first black team to win a major national championship. If you're Hall of Fame concessions, you can become the first team since Carpet Country to win a major national championship and the first team to ever win a Class A and a major national championship. And you are doing it live on SSA Broadcast, powered by Gold Rush Gaming. So leading off here, it's going to be 2 3 4. Hobson, Shannon, and Chapman. And there's a shot. Backhand play throw in time. Jordan Bowers, right in your living room, made the backhanded catch and threw over the top strike for the first out. Hobson can't believe it. James Hobson can fly. No wasted effort. Or motion there by Bowers. So here's Wes Shannon. And he just pounds a hit up the middle. And Wes is going to go. It's safe. Wes Shannon trying to make something happen. Hit a rocket up the middle. He might have caught... Hall of Fame sleeping because Wes cut the bag tight at first and he was going to go regardless as that was a hard base hit up the middle. Dakota Walkins got to charge that ball. 
didn't quite, kind of waited a, just a hair on it. And that's all Wes Shannon needed. So here's Donnie Chapman. Again, he's been wearing Hall of Fame out. And Donnie hits a weird spinner. And Dakota Walken, no chance at getting Wes Shannon. And now they're going to say, set safe. They were going to say West left early, but West quick as a cat. He was tagging all the way on that. And that ball was weird. It looked like Donnie Chapman hit it off the end of the bat, and it had a little spin. So here's JB, John Banks, trying to put BTA back up by a deuce. And he just tries to slap and want and, and safe at first. So John Banks gets that run back six to four. Saw Jordan Bowers was playing him a little deep. He just hit a little two or three hopper over here. Brings up Tommy Washington, six to four. Big run there for BTA as they're trying to grab or at least stall some of the momentum that we were seeing on the Hall of Fame side. Last time we saw a play like that at a major national championship tournament, the SSA was in Wheeling. Jeff Hernandez hit a little hit a little roller down the third baseline against the 45s. Now Thomas said that really wasn't a chop. Because he didn't, there was no, there was no 12-6 action on it. He swung through the ball and broke the wrist and all. And there's a little oppo flare. And they're going to throw. Oh, he didn't see him. And they got him at the plate. Pat Sharps here took the cutoff. Took the cutoff. At first he looked at third, then he threw home. And they get him at the plate six to four. Well, normally a chop swing isn't going to be called when you see the type of bounce that happened there. There was no high bounce on that. Most chops are 12-6, and the ball is beaten into the ground almost directly in front of home plate. That first hop was 3, 4, you know, 7, 8, 10 feet, whatever it was. That ball was taken knee-high, shin-high type bounces down to third. It just wasn't hit hard. So here we go, top of the six. This ball game <laughs> has been everything you want in a major national championship game. Two teams going all out, great defense, fantastic hustle. So here we go. I don't know what the delay is. I think both teams just wanted to take a breath. So here's Sam Rogers, Jordan Pace. This is a 16-inch softball clincher. Game was invented here in Chicago. It's the greatest game on the planet. So here is Sam Rogers. We're in the sixth inning. Hall of Fame is not led for even a second in both of these games. And there's a bullet. Line drive, base hit, Sam Rogers. He sat back and he just hit a humpback. Sure is, Jordan. It's not fake. And if you don't know what you're doing, we play it no glove normally. 99% of what we do is no glove softball. And there's a ground ball to Verney, to Banks. And they turn to double play. I'm sorry, that was Walken. Big double play, about the only place 
Dakota Walken can hit into a double plays if he hits it back up the middle, either to the short center or the pitcher. And they got him easy. Thrashed through it perfectly to second, and John Banks wound up and threw a strike. And that brings up Ross Randall. No, actually, it's not squishy, Jordan. And trust me, bare hand. And there's a base hit. How big is that double play now? And he's going to try to go, and he's in under the tag. Ross Randall. The hustle double. Both teams are not stopping when they run. Yeah, and if you don't know what you're doing without a glove, you can tear your hands up. So that brings up sharp share. And again, if you're Ross, you don't want to get picked off because you're going to score on a single. And I got to tell you, they're not playing them deep and left. James Hobson, not too deep in center. Maron Jones, relatively deep in right. But Ross Randall going to score on a base hit with two outs. And that ball's on the plate. you got Justin Burns on deck. Takes a strike there. And there's a rocket just over Arion Gibson, 6-5. to five. Arion Gibson... Kind of shaking his head. He thought he was going to be able to get it, and the ball just cleared the tips of his gloves. Now we got ourselves a pinch runner for Sharp's hair. I'm not sure if that's Barry coming in on a re entry or a different one. We'll take a look. If so, Sharp's hair will be out of the ball game. Six to five BTA top of the sixth. Here comes Justin Burns. Holy mackerel, this has been one heck of a championship ball game. And I think they're looking on the card. I don't know what the number is. Again, our rule here at the Slow Pitch Softball Association is a lot different than the other guys. We've seen tournaments. Part of the reason we created the SSA was we thought we could do some things better. And we could never figure out if you're legitimately on a roster that you turned in, if a coach should happen to forget you on a lineup card, why somebody might call you ineligible for that game when you are in actuality on the team. So here we go. Big spot. Tying run at first. And there's a ball hit to high. And they do just get the force out. And don't get me started on the not sliding at second base. And you could probably see as he got close to the bag, he was shutting it down. And they did nip him. So that was Levi Randall. My guess is he might be related to Ross. But again, my pet peeve, you got to slide. You don't slide. It costs you about a step and a half. And he was out by about a step. So I just think that, you know, I used to tell my guys, you know, back in the day when we started, everybody had long pants. Now people are wearing shorts. And we were talking about, you know, back in the day when shorts started coming into vogue and they were starting to be allowed. And when I was running my club, my standing rule was you can wear shorts, but the first time you don't slide, you were going to spend some quality bench time with me and you were going to be told that you got to wear your softball pants so here we go now bottom of the sixth in a six to five ball game this is arian gibson be followed by greg flemings and then maron jones so right now it's six to five bottom of the sixth you got to give bta the slight edge not just because they're winning but because they got more outs left Backhand long throw. Oh, a high throw. But something happened there. 
Arian Gibson collapsed running down the line. I'm not sure what happened. I don't know if he pulled something. He's going to limp off. You see the bat was right near the baseline. I'm not sure if when he was getting out of the box, if maybe he didn't didn't throw the bat right away and may have fell down. But Gibson, who can fly, Trey Blackford threw it a little too tall for Pat Sharpshare. He couldn't make the catch, but Arian Gibson was laying on the ground. He's trying to walk it off. We hope he's okay. Terrific young player. See what happened there, Coach? Oh, cramps. Okay, well, you guys have been playing a few ball games today. So he just said he cramped up there. Again, you young kids, you got to drink. Fleming, sharp, sharp play there. Come back or to Flanagan. One more out, and it's going to be do or die top of the seventh. And here comes Maron Johnson, or Johnson, Jones. And I don't know. Now it looks like they are they calling him back to hit for him? No, he's going to get the bat with the hit in it. Okay. I got it. He said, wait a minute. This one don't got no hits in it. Okay. So he, we got that squared away. So here we go. Mayron Jones with Antoine Thrash on deck. Now, they already hit for Thrash earlier in the ball game, So they're going to have to let... They're going to have to let him hit here. You're, and there's a little, and another catch. <laughs> Flanagan, I like that. You talk about the bat flip. That was the glove and the ball flip. So a little style there, and I got to admit I was wrong. He's pitched a whale of a ball game. But I think part of it here is the fact that Hall of Fame, we talk about you want to maintain contact, let the other guy know that you're there to play, and that two-run homer ever since that shot by Dylan Deveni, it's been a completely different Hall of Fame team and different BTA club. So here we go. Let's see who's coming up. Looks like Dylan Deveni is going to lead off Cody Johnson. And then the top of the order with Jordan Bowers and T.J. Flanagan. Do or die top of the seventh. SSA Gold Rush Gaming Major National Championship title on the line. BTA three defensive outs away from becoming the first team from Washington Park to win a men's major national championship. A lot riding on this inning. Here's Deveni. Tell you, this is not for the faint of heart. And ball hit the plate. So let's see if they try to maybe see if they can coax a walk. Taken all the way. There's a strike. Now if you're Hall of Fame and you're Dylan Deverney, you can't worry about balls and strikes. You've got to look to put something in play. And there's a little ground ball. Tommy Walsh barehanded. Throw off line. Tommy Walsh barehanded that ball one-handed. Throw is just up the line. Tying run at first. And the Hall of Fame guys are, like, telling them, that, hey, that was sick. I saw Matt McWhorter do that in a game in an A-glove national championship tournament. So here's Cody Johnson. So the throw was just up the line. Wes Shannon did a great job laying out to keep that ball from rattling around. And maybe giving Deveni a chance to get to second. If you're Cody Johnson here, you cannot lay it on the carpet. And he cuts, and that ball is going to be caught by Arian Gibson. Arian Gibson, spectacular. He took about seven, ten steps. Leaping as he was running towards center field, makes the grab for out number one. 
BTA two outs away. And now we got the top with Jordan Bowers and TJ Flanagan. Deveni can fly. Any type of stretch single, he's probably going to score. Tension here, you can cut it with a knife right now. Takes that pitch inside. Well, you know, Wes, sometimes you got to know your personnel. While Deveni, and there's a little roller. This could be two. Over to first, not in time. Good job by Dylan Deveni as he got into JB's legs to prevent the double play. What I was going to say, you got to know your personnel. Cody Johnson is not a ground ball hitter. So some, and he's a big guy. One out for history for Washington Park. BTA. TJ Flanagan, all that stands between Washington Park winning its first major national championship behind BTA. Here's the pitch. Takes a strike. Trey Blackford on deck. Here's the pitch. Takes that deep. Again, you don't want to walk anybody. BTA didn't like the call. Again, to me, this is wasted energy here. Can't worry about it. Spending time worrying about a strike call you got or didn't get. So here's TJ Flanagan. And he swings, and that's going to do it! Washington Park, your major national champions reside in Washington Park! BTA completes the double dip of Hall of Fame concessions, and they win the SSA Gold Rush Gaming major national champions! Holy cow! What a performance by BTA! came out on fire one big in the first game and then had a gutted out here Hall of Fame gave it a great shot in the if game but it wasn't enough spectacular defense on both sides tremendous effort and hustle and there are <laughs> your major national champions Washington Park they won the national championship for the A no glove, the A glove, and now the men's major national championship. So whatever that coach told them on Wednesday came through. So we're going to be clicking off. George Bliss will have the postgame show coming up. So fantastic national championship game. For SSA Broadcast, I'm going to be turning it over to George Bliss. Thank you for tuning in. Slow Pitch Softball Association, best coverage in the game. Thank you, Gold Rush Gaming. Now we're going to go over to George Bliss. He's going to be live right now. Two up. Top of the seven. This could be historical. BTA. Tony Ward right in front of me. Number six is batting. That's the time run on, on first. Ward backing up his off here. Come on! Here we go. Let's see if this is it. Let's see if BTA wins it from right here. They are one hour away from winning the Nationals. BTA. Joliet, 2022 versus HOF. There's a ball.
on, JB. Don't make him put it on the team. Right back to you, Fred. Work, Fred. Right back to you. God damn it. live out here this is the post game you see GLV taking the still photos here of the second place Hall of Fame confessions team plenty of time here George Bliss post game won by BTA they're standing behind us we want to say hi to everybody watching on the World Wide Web an incredible incredible time Iowa second place first time this decade that they've been here and of course BTA the first african-american team ever to win it just absolutely incredible and I'm going to show a little action over here right here it's all good Tony Ward yeah. so BTA is going to be called to home plate you're watching live the post game we're going to thank a lot of people after this George Bliss post game here on SSA broadcast. Monstrous celebration here in Joliet as BTA has won it all. First African American team ever to win it. I believe the Safari Tigers took a couple second places, but this is a first in history. It's never been done. There's Ron Matriciano, there's Pat Caputo. BTA. Beautiful team, incredible offense, have double dipped. The Iowa team double dipped it. And we're gonna have people on the microphone here. We're gonna have a lot of fun. So post game live, George, incredible. It's an amazing, just I'm really happy for these guys. They earned this, man. They were the best team out here. So they're the champions and first time an African American team, a Chicago team has won. So there we go. Yeah. There's Pat Caputo. So you hear the crowd going crazy here. We are live right over here. 
We're going to grab Tony Ward here in a second. Yeah, final score. Final score is a one-run game. 6-5. Six, 6-5 five. Six five was the final score. The celebration begins. The celebration begins. Here we go. Let's get Tony Ward. Tony. Just, you have made history, my friend. How are you feeling? I'm feeling that fantastic, man. I'm so proud of my guys. My guys hung in there. You know, we fought the adversity uh, within ourselves for the most part. But uh, the main thing is we sustain, and we're here now. We're national champs, baby. <laughs> Tony comments on the first African-American team to ever do it. Say it again. The first African American team to do this. Comment, please. Yeah. Oh, well, we're happy to be in the opportunity. Uh, Washington Park has represented this uh, represented tournaments throughout the throughout the season. I mean, we're just a part of that. And uh, hey, man, all I can say is we're so proud and happy of this team, this organization. We needed this. We we just happy, man. Thanks for having us, man. We just enjoyed the fact that we got a chance to play ball like we play ball. Enjoy. Tony Ward. Now let's get some of the other guys here. Post game. Let's get our guy right here. Comments from our guy there. George Comments. Good comments from our, our man right there. Could you know his name? What do you think, brother? Tell us about it. It's been a journey. Been a long day today, huh? It ends sweetly, though, right? Take your time, brother. Take your time. Take your time. <laughs> Obviously, very emotional, George. But uh, a lot of work. That's my, that's my brother here. He'd be all right. Hey, you smile now. I'm sad and uh, you're a champion. You guys are the first African American team to win it. Tell us about that. Well. I'm original young girl. I started in '98. It was my first year playing here, and it's just been a dream chasing this tournament since '98. I think 2010, I came close in Iowa. That's a special group of guys, man. <laughs> young, brilliant. I always told them if they just stay focused, we can beat anybody. Well, you certainly guys stay focused this weekend. And it's just a pleasure, man. You know, I'm 50 years old now. Go and, go enjoy. Go right. enjoy with your teammates. Thank Celebrate. You. Thank you, brother. Right. That's uh, one of the great, great players. Yeah. Yeah, let's get, let's get Wes Shannon. We'll find him. one of the superstars. Yeah, we'll find out. Oh, yeah, Thrash. Oh, God, yes. Yeah. Oh my God! Well, we're, we're just having fun. Where's West Shannon? Hey, hey, Odie, don't bring up him, man. That's all right, Wes. Hang on one second. Hang on one second, Wes. Go ahead, George. West Shannon, incredible player. I saw you five years ago. I said, "There's nobody like this guy at Forest Park." You've won it tonight, brother. Thank you. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. How you feeling? Good. I got a good group of guys I'm playing with, man. They stuck with me through the whole tournament. You rake, you rake through this whole tournament. You were really raking, brother. I appreciate it. Tell us about it. First African American team to win the champ the national. Tell us about that. It feels great. Feels great. We never thought we'd have did we'd have did it before, but we did it. Maybe 2022 champs. Right. That's the great Wes Shannon, everybody. Wes going to get a few more players, okay? You go celebrate. Go celebrate. Right, thank, you. Thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So Wes Shannon celebrating. A couple more folks over here. We got to get the great pitcher. The incredible pitching job, George, that he did with all the pictures. Where's Trash? Where's the Trash Man? Where is he? We'll find him. He's over there, George. Yeah. So we're following George Kamenos here and everybody post game. Great performance today. Great weekend by your team. Yeah. Yeah, it was It was a hard battle. I mean, I love this game. I didn't realize how much it missed it. I mean, eight games in two days, and I haven't pitched in over two years. I got a call and say, hey, could you come, come play with me in the Nationals? I say, well, I'll give y'all what I can. 
The problem now, though, is going to be getting out of the car when I get back to the <laughs> south side of Chicago after this long drive. I got hamstring issues, but this is great. And I, I was telling a lot of the guys from Smack Out and talked to a few guys from Iowa, and I was telling them I love softball, but I miss the camaraderie. Because when you get to talk with guys and see guys that you don't see in your normal, everyday walk of life, and then when we all are seeing Don Joliet, that's what makes 16-inch softball. It, it, truly, it truly is a, a almost a cult sport. It's just there's something about this game, isn't it? Absolutely. I mean, it's just something about this game that make you miss your draft on fantasy football like I did today. So I don't know what kind of team I'm going to have. But uh, I love that. I enjoy it. I enjoy playing with these guys. I like the tournament. It was a great tournament. And what can I say? SSA all the way. Let's get some fans. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Let's get some fans. Come on in here. Come on in here. Okay, what do you think? Come on, tell us all about it. Come okay, on. like, I've been watching softball for a long time. And I just, they've had the lineup to really win. So, this is like special right now because they finally came through. So I'm just so overjoyed right now, and I'm just happy for PT. Like, hey, let's go! Thank you. Celebration continue. Yeah. Well, we're walking on the sidelines. Everybody doing good. We're gonna move over to the trophy area, George, and we're gonna slip off right now. This was the immediate post game. Gio, incredible. Ah, uh, probably one of the best national championship games we've seen in a long, long time. I mean, both teams phenomenal defensively. Uh, they just, it was magnificent. We had a lot of people watching live, yeah. and I think that both teams put on a great show. So I'll get turn it back to you, George. Yeah, we're going to switch you. it over. We're going to go up to the trophy area. This is the uh, end of the portion of the post-game celebration. As we leave you from Joliet, just temporarily, as they say, a little prayer, I believe. Hey, look, since we started, y'all, we've been the toughest team in the park. Fuck everything that we've we, we been through. I want to apologize to my team for everything that I done did. I done put y'all through. Y'all done put, we done put each other through. I swear to God, I'm not going nowhere. Yeah. This is home. Right now. We here to stay and win plenty more yeah, fucking nights, y'all. Let's fucking go. Let's fucking go. Yeah. So we got the family over here, all the good people. We're going to have the uh, trophy presentation right after this. Play softball. It's the greatest game in America. Come on, come on. Yeah. 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 Ye
trying to find somebody to score. In the third inning, by the time he gets back, you didn't think you were going to get this far? Hey, Zach! Y'all already hurt. You already hurt. Y'all 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 already hurt. Let's go! Let's go! Y'all looking like hoodlums oh, over here. One, two, three. Yeah. Actually, I'm drinking. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me, y'all. We got to dig a little bit deeper. We gonna dig deeper. We deserve this, bro. We deserve this so Go. Was it Washington Park today? I don't think so. No, nothing, nothing on the What happened? I ate one. Eat another one. I had one. No, I'm good. I'm okay. Okay. Sure, let me make this one right quick. Get a piece of peppermint and get a little bulk, get a little yogurt and sugar. You okay. I got some, I got some lemon drink. Okay. Hey, can I get your attention? Can I get your attention? Couple of things. We're going to be handing out some awards for all tournament teams, first and second, MVP, and of course the batting champ. But before we get to that, I want to thank everybody and all the teams, all of you fans that came out. First time we've been down here in Joliet. It was a crazy weekend. All the big teams were getting slapped and knocked down. We got some new blood now coming in. Hall of Fame, thank you for coming in. All the teams from Iowa. BTA kept that streak. Washington Park winning national championships this summer. You guys were fantastic. So we just want to thank you because we can't do, we can't do the stuff we do without your support. And we appreciate all of you. We thank you for everything you guys do for us and the love you show us. And trust me, we love you all. So now we're going to go to Anthony Tyler. Thank you. And we're going to have Anthony Tyler. He's going to announce the all-tournament stuff. So if you're here, we want you to come up. We're going to stand over here if you got an award. Your teams are both going to get your plaques. And then we're going to take pictures of the all-tournament teams, the MVP, and all of that. So, here's Tyler. He got that a little out of order. We're going to do that last. First thing we're going to do is we're going to congratulate the Hall of Fame concessions team. And I'd like your coach to come on up. Come on up, coach. Hall of Fame. Yeah, come on up. Oh, coach. We have some individual awards for uh, Hall of Fame for coming in second place. Congrats. Thank you. So, Mike's going to you. You can call your players one by one. Come on up. Wow, we have awards for you guys. I can't even see these guys. <laughs> All right, we got Jordan Bowers. Come on up here. There you go. Yeah, sure. DJ Flanagan, let's go ahead. There you go. Chris Nedelecki. Justin Burns, go ahead. We got Sam Rogers coming next. This is Bose Blackford coming in. You guys come up here. We got Mitch Berry now. Is Mitch around? How about Trey Blackford? We got Dylan Devaney there. Dakota Walken. We 
We got Pat Sharpshooter back there. There's uh, Levi Randall back there. And then Ross Randall. All right, Travis Foth. Yeah. And then Joe Court. Come on, Joe. That's us. Get the rest of the coach. And to the coach. Tony! Next up! The whole team. 2022 Major National Champions BTA! Yeah! There you go. Start calling their names. Okay. Uh, Randolph Ellis! Yeah. Andre Katz! You come to this side of me. Yeah. Yeah. Williams! Robert Walker, <laughs> Wesley Shannon, <laughs> Tommy Washington, <laughs> Maroon <Mariah> Jones, <laughs> John Banks, <laughs> JB baby. Antonio Fresh! <laughs> James Hobson! <laughs> Lance Greer! <laughs> Ariane Gibson! Greg <laughs> <Dwayne> Flemings! <laughs> Shabante! Shabante Samuel! Chapman, Donnie Chapman. Hold this for a second. So that was the BTA player by player. That's Tony Ward there. Here's a little shot right here. There's your winners right there. <laughs> All right, we're going to go back here to the next stage of the affair. Pedo. Carlos Casaberry finishing out the presentation here. Now we'll move to the next step. We send it back. A round of applause for BTA. BTA. All right. Alright, we're gonna do the all tournament team now. We're gonna start with the second team. If you're here, come on up, grab your award. From Moneyline, Drew Chaveria. From the Shooters, PJ Reigns. From Hex, Mike Greco. Greco here? From Flashback, Pat Dillon. From Menace, Brandon Alvarado. Alvarado. <laughs> From Smackout, Steve Mazursky. 
from Hex, Tom Higgins. Also from Hex, Rob Scahill. From Hall of Fame Concessions, Dylan Divney. I know he's here. From Old Timers, Matt Mackey. From Menace, Colin Farley. From Signature, Mark Menizzi. That's our second all tournament team. Now we're going to do our first all tournament team. You guys ready? From Hex, Jimmy Moretti. From Impact, Danny Marston. I think Danny's here. Here he is here. From Smackout, Zal Bellinas. From Hall of Fame Concessions, Randall Ross. Also from Hall of Fame Concessions, Dakota. Walking? Did I get that right? Close? Close? Like the Dakota, the Dakota, Dakota, Dakota. Thanks. From Impact, Dave Winslow. From BTA, John Banks. Also from BTA, Tommy Washington. Also from BTA, Donnie Chapman. From Hall of Fame, Sam Rogers. From Impact, Chris Miller. He's here. And the uh, the last first all tournament team. Also, the batting champ batted 680 for the tournament. And also, your 2022 Major National MVP, Wes Shannon! It's Wes Shannon! Gio's been watching this guy for years. This is your number one player in the city today. It's Wes Shannon, everybody. This is guy is as good as it gets right here. Here's Wes Shannon. Wes, congratulations. All three. Thank you. All three How does it feel to be the best player in the city right now? Real good. Real good. You earned it. You worked for it. Yeah. Yeah. All them, all them, all them days in South Shore that I go to practice by myself paid off. I appreciate it. I appreciate my team, too. Well, you go have a little fun with them, folks, okay? Thank you. God bless, Wes. You're the best. That's Wes Shannon, folks. Nobody better. Before we go off the air tonight, I want to thank all the people of the SSA. You got a group here, of course, none other than... Pat Caputo, of course, our leader, and of course, GOV, Anthony Tyler, my friend George Camus from Chicago, Mike Choates here, Ron Matriciano, Tonsi Saresovich, Sal Malazzo, all the scorekeepers, all the umpires, all the people in the bar, the staff, everybody here. What an incredible group of people here. 
as they celebrate here at BTA, having a great time. MVP Wes Shannon, we called it a couple years ago. This one's a great one. So on behalf of everybody at SSA, Geo was a great one. We're going to sign off now. We want to give our best, our best to everybody. George Bliss, live from Joliet. Wes Shannon's the MVP. BTA is the national champions. Play softball. It's the greatest game in America.